Hi, my name is Ed. I work here at the Seattle REI flagship store. I teach the GPS classes here, so we're going to talk today about an overview of GPS and what it can do for you. But before we do that, there are a couple of things that you need to know. The first thing is that a GPS doesn't replace a map and compass. So I like to say that maps don't break and compasses don't run out of batteries. And a GPS is only as good as the map you use with it. If you've got a good map, that's a good start. The best maps available are the USGS 1 to 24,000 topographical sheets. One of the best ways to improve the performance of your GPS is to do a little thing that we call initialization. It's a process by which the GPS orients itself to its current location and it downloads information from the satellites. This information is going to help it work a lot better in the future as well as locate other satellites quickly and more efficiently. Every GPS that REI sells can do four basic functions. First, it will give you a location. Second, it will take you point to point from lo one location to another. Third, it will do a route, which is a series of waypoints composed along a trail. And fourth, it will keep a track of where you've gone. Every GPS that we have will do these functions. The first is a location. Every GPS will give you a location in, a, in form of uh, coordinates, usually uh, latitude and longitude, or we prefer universal transverse mercators or UTMs. It's a much more efficient system. Um, it'll give you a set of coordinates that you can then relate to a map, and that map can be on your GPS or preferably a hard copy map. If you're using UTMs, you can actually uh, de determine down within about 10 meters of where you are on your map. The second function is a point-to-point uh, -point navigation. So, for example, if you're at point A and you want to go to point B, you put in the coordinates for point B properly, you tell the GPS to perform a go-to function, it will then give you a straight line bearing and distance from your location to your destination. Uh, it can be done in the form of a compass heading or it can be done in degrees. For example, if it says your, uh, your uh, destination is at 270 at 300 meters, it's due west of your location about 300 meters. Third, it will do a route function. A waypoint is the same as a set of coordinates. The only difference is a waypoint usually has a name attached to it, like car or trailhead or campsite, something like that. When you take a series of waypoints and put them along a trail, this becomes a route, and they're tied together. So that when you go from point A to B to C to D to E, the GPS will take you automatically from A to B, B to C, C to D, D to E to your destination. The final function that a GPS, uh, basic function that a GPS performs is as a track. Now a track differs from a route in that a route is where you're going, a track is where you've been. So for example, here's a scenario that you might use a track. Once you get to your destination, you set out your campsite. It's a nice day, you want to go do some, uh, you want to go do some more hiking, so you set up your track on your GPS and you head out. Let's say the weather changes, gets bad, maybe you get disoriented and turned around and you don't know how to get back to your camp. But you're lucky because you've set up your track and now you can follow your track back to the camp. So it's like a breadcrumb trail in a way. So those are the four basic functions. The location, a point-to-point -point navigation, a uh, route, and a track. From there we go on to the features that a GPS has. As far as features are concerned, you have two types of screen. You have color or grayscale. You'll also have different types of memory in there, and the, the capacity of the memory is how much or how many maps a GPS can hold. The third are, are your antennas. We'll have three different types of antennas. You have the patch antenna, a quad helix antenna, and a quad helix antenna with an enhanced chipset. The fourth is uh, the sensors. And when we talk about sensors, we're talking about the magnetic compass or the barometric altimeter. Now, a magnetic compass on a GPS is really kind of redundant because you should be carrying a hard copy map and compass with you anyway. So you can turn that off and save yourself some battery power. Now that you're familiar with the basic functions of the GPS and you also know what the features are, we highly encourage you to take your GPS out to a park somewhere and play with it. Take it out, push the buttons. You're probably not going to break it, and that's the best way to know what each function does on the GPS and how the buttons work.